Do you know what evil is? Can you define it? Let's watch this fascinating clip from Douglas Murray, and then I'm going to discuss the evil that he's describing. One of the things that has struck me a lot in the, the last year has been that uh, the, and I've made this comment a couple of times in pieces and, and elsewhere, that the, 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 the terrorists of the seventh in particular were, were deeply gleeful whilst carrying out acts of unbelievable barbarism. And that's something that, that that's something I'm, I've been thinking about a lot because to be, to be doing something you think is, is right, but, but is evil is one thing. To be doing something that is evil and, and being joyful about it is, um, and, and for, and for people around you to celebrate it. And then at several degrees of remove, <laughs> Uh, that people who think they've got the same cause as you would excuse it or, you know, say, uh, well, context or, you know, much, much like uh, all sorts of things like that, that are just alarming. And, and I, you know, I've often thought actually in recent months of there was a late, uh, a historian and writer called Gita Sereni, who died about 20 years ago, made a great impact on me when I was growing up. She wrote, among other things, the biography of the child killer Mary Bell, and also the biographies of uh, Stangl, the, the camp commandant of Treblinka, who she interviewed, and also of Albert Speer. I remember reading an interview with Gita Sereni towards the end of her life, and she, she was not a religious person, but she said, having spent a lot of her life considering evil and staring at evil and writing about evil, she said, it, it, it's, it feels like a force that descends. It just it just manifests, and there's no other explanation for it. It's not. It, it, it isn't just about some problem in the developmental process, or simply a matter of education or opportunity. Is that on top of all those problems that do exist, sometimes there is an incarnation of evil in the world. You know what he's explaining is a very important idea which a lot of people just simply don't acknowledge. You know, often we people think that evil is just the result of someone who's dissatisfied, the result of someone who's oppressed, the result of someone who's not getting what they want. There could be very mild forms of someone acting out because things are not the way they should be. But when you see extreme behavior, like what, like what we have seen on October 7th, by way of example, we're seeing something which is pure evil, which is a force. It's actually an energy, which is the way it's described in Jewish spirituality. It is a form of dark energy. So an energy has power to it. There's a power to this. For someone to be laughing, as he describes gleefully, and as you may have heard the, the phone call of the terrorist to his parents, when someone's in that state of mind, they have descended into such a deep state of darkness. There's no reasoning there. And there's nothing that can justify that type of behavior. And the person on that level is not even justifying it. They're in a deep, dark state. And, you know, the way Judaism explains evil is evil is anti-God. That's actually what evil is. God is life and evil is death. Those are synonymous. God is synonymous with life and evil is synonymous with death. How do we know that? You probably know that because we know that from the very first time human beings did something which was in opposition to God, to the will of God, to the command of God. And that was Adam and Eve when they ate from the tree. What was the result of that? The result of that is, Mot Tamut, the Torah says, you will surely die. They, they were, would have lived eternally. There was no dying. There was no ending of things. When things are pure and transparent to the divine, they are eternal because they are an expression of life. The moment we are misaligned with God, we are actually inviting death. Death, whether it's in the physical sense or death in the sense that what we are, what we are doing is not going to sustain itself. Death entered the world when God was denied. 
That's why God is synonymous with life and evil is synonymous with death. You don't get a pass to do evil when you are oppressed. You don't get a pass to do evil when you're angry. You don't get a pass to do evil when you're dissatisfied with your circumstances. It's just not the way it works because the evil remains anti-God. Anti-God will never, ever produce something productive because it's synonymous with death, which is not productive. The only exception to this is when God instructs us to end life. Why? For one reason. Because then it actually is an expression of God. And God is synonymous with good. That is good. It's not evil, right? Which is very rare. We have certain stories in the Bible where God tells us in the Torah, um, in very rare instance, instances, to kill out certain people. Outside of that, Murder is evil, except for one more exception. The Torah says if someone rises up to kill you, then you must kill, rise up and kill them first. That's the reason why when someone attacks or threatens, I should say, threatens um, your life, you have a duty and an obligation, which is an expression of the divine and becomes holy and good to kill them. And that is the difference between what Hamas has done and what Israel is doing. And this is a critical distinction that we all need to be clear of so we can live according to divine morality. Now, divine morality actually is in some way redundant. If it's divine, it's moral. And if you claim to be moral without the divine, you are being immoral. And quite frankly, the reason why our world is so morally bankrupt is because we make up subjective morality. And and people have the distortion, the dangerous distortion to say that when evil strikes, Instead of destroying it as God tells us to do, the world says pacify it. And that is the reason why we are where we are until today, because we have not killed it as God tells us to do. We have pacified it, prolonging the suffering of everyone involved. We must instill in ourselves divine morality asking ourselves what God tells us to do in this situation and to be able to identify the force of evil, call it what it is, and know that we have the duty, the divine duty to obliterate it. And while doing so, knowing we are living up to divine morality.